So on this beautiful sunny morning, is this mic good? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Excellent. <clears throat> Very good. Uh, so while we're in town, uh, as mentioned, I would like you to make yourself comfortable on the motor coach. So the seats do recline if you need to adjust it for your back. And the armrests in the aisle seat are in the down position. And all you need to do is lift up on the armrest and it will come up and lock into place. When it's time to get out of your seat, all you have to do is lift up on the armrest and it will unlock and you can go right back and it'll go right back down where you found it, okay? There are two first aid kits located in the overhead compartment on the driver's side. So at the front of the bus here on the driver's side, the overhead compartment, there are two first aid kits located up there if we need that along the journey. And also there is a fire extinguisher underneath the second row seat on the entry door side. So where you came in from, on that side of the bus, at the front, underneath the second row seat, there is a fire extinguisher, okay? There is a toilet, washroom, or loo, whatever you call it, located at the back of the bus. There is hand sanitizer in the washroom or toilet area. And I also have hand sanitizer located at the front of the bus. On the door, when you're getting off the bus, after you're using the handrail going down the stairs, you can access the hand sanitizer on the door on your way off the bus. And then also, again, if you wish, coming back on the bus, I have hand sanitizer at the top of the stairs just behind the driver after you use the handrail. So we're trying to help you out with that as much as possible. Now the overhead compartments are for your personal use. You can store any personal belongings above your seat, just like in an airplane. Uh, but we just ask that you remember to close the door before sitting back down to make sure nothing falls out while we are in motion. If you have to uh, walk along the bus while the bus is in motion, for example, if you're going to the back of the bus to use the washroom, we just ask that you try to maintain two points of contact while you're walking along the edge. So if you could hold on to the back of the seats as you're walking, or if you could use the upper handrail at the base of the overhead compartments. If you could just keep your hands in there or one of them uh, for balance in case I have to tap on my brakes for wildlife or a tourist that doesn't know how to drive properly. Uh, we experience those occasionally, so we just want to make sure that we don't have any accidental falls on the bus while it's in motion, okay? It's just about your safety, thank you. Appreciate that. This motor coach is equipped with seat belts. We do ask that you wear your seat belts while the bus is in motion from stop to stop as we are in mountainous conditions and it is Alberta law. Our first stop today is going to be at Lake Louise. And then from Lake Louise, we're going to be going over to Moraine Lake. And then from Moraine Lake, we're going to the province of British Columbia. And we will be making a roadside stop at the spiral tunnels where the train goes through two mountains spiraling inside each of the mountains. We will be looking at the lower side of the highway to the other side safely across. When the highway was built, Now, and I said a 20 
minute stop here. So by the time we get off the bus, it will be 10-2. So that means 10-10. That's easy for you to remember, right? So let's say 10-10 together. 10-10. That is the time that we would like to depart from this viewpoint right here. Okay, excellent. I'm going to drop you off right here next to this trail. You're going to get off the bus. You're going to walk down to the lake. You can see it through the trees there. I'm just going to park the bus in the parking lot and you will come back to bus 329 at 1010. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. Just remind a reminder. There's hand one. Enjoy the beautiful Lake Louise. that's a lesson for the rest of you we will carry on it is unfortunate but we are more than 20 minutes behind our time the gentleman is staying here at the Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise so I'm not sure if he was confused about maybe he went into the hotel to check in I, I don't know but he is scheduled to be on our tour and then I on top of if you wish um, and, and get some absolutely um, stunning photos from the top of the moraine. The higher you go, the more intense the color is in the lakes here in the Canadian Rockies. As we enjoy the views of the left-hand side of the bus, down the valley, the village of Lake Louise down below, 
That's how high we've come already. Might not even seem like it. But the rock flower, as I started to see, so I hope you enjoy it. Not trying to scare anyone, just letting them know I'm coming behind them. Beautiful spot here, folks.
taking photographs for after lunch, okay? And we'll all walk together across the, the minibus. Yeah, it's right here. How do you do the uh, Yeah. 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 to the lunch. Thank <laughs> Did you get it?
so nice to share brief conversations with a number of you off the bus and how excited you are about this place and how beautiful you think it is and I'm so uh, happy to be able to share this with you and take you to these beautiful places today. It's just a real pleasure to be able to show you this part of our country. So another good angle for seeing the railway line on the right hand side, following it up, and then some of you off in the distance will be able to see that man-made tunnel, forward right, and that is there to protect the trains from debris that comes down the mountain. In the winter time avalanches go down there and large boulders have uh, knocked some trains right off the tracks. So they put that man-made tunnel there to prevent that from happening again. Now the debris goes right over the train and the tracks together. As we drive along, uh, some of you will be able to get a good look at it from this angle of the natural uh, tunnel in the mountain. See where those electrical posts are and then it comes out into the air and into that man-made tunnel for a few moments and then just continues on. But that's a bad spot for the debris as you can see. And then looking way up at Cathedral Mountain Peak up there where it looks like a church or a cathedral. Cathedral, way up there. A little better view, view when we come back out this road because we'll be facing it a little easier, but uh, depending on where you're sitting on the bus, pointed out to you there. And the sun on the mountain to our left is just beautiful. I have seen mountain goats on this road in here, so the white mountain goats with the short black horns, they frequent this area, as well as elk, moose, and deer. Yes, there's some mountain goats in front of us. So uh, as we turn to the right, way up high on the rock cliffs there, you can see a white mountain goat. Very good eye, thank you. Way up there, folks. Can everyone see the mountain goat? I'm gonna make a quick little stop here. We're gonna let some traffic by. You can see the mountain goat up there. And if we see them moving around and jumping, don't hold your breath about whether they might fall because they have little, uh, what is called, uh, like a suction cup. It's a natural solution that comes out of the, their, their uh, uh, hoof. And in the center of the hard part of their hoof, is a soft section and it almost creates like a natural suction cup and uh, that helps them when they're jumping from rock to rock so keeping your eyes open all along these beautiful rugged cliffs
करूँ It's now pointing back this way if it's a westbound train coming along this way. And then after it gets turned around, it's coming down the mountain at the 2.2% rate. We saw the tracks go underneath the highway just before we got here. And then that's why we can see the railroad tracks literally right in front of us here through the trees. It goes across behind these trees, turns to the left, and then it goes across and level the city. Once it goes in the tunnel there, different measurement here, this is 1.8 kilometers. So almost two kilometers inside the mountain. It's turning inside, spiraling down. So when it comes out that lower tunnel right there, if it's a long train, it's coming out underneath its own train. The very same train is above it, it's going in the mountain, it comes out. When it comes out that lower tunnel, it continues west and goes into the town of Field, which we saw the tracks gradually going down into the town. So a lot of zigzagging, but behind me is a 3D model of this mountain pass where we can see what's happening here. Lots of information on these placards. And over to my left, we have a piece of the uh, steam locomotive. Remember I talked about how some of them would explode? Well, this is a piece of one of those uh, that exploded that was just found down in the trees over here.
make it the highway right so they opened it up and made that the highway and that's where the original locomotives were going down and back up so as I talked about behind the trees here that's this railway line right here in Cathedral Mountain coming out down under the highway which we just saw in front of us and I said it turned in behind these trees into this upper tunnel turning around inside the mountain at 1.8 kilometers it comes out and continuing so you can see this nice gray gradual slope it needs to get down the mountain safely instead of basically over and down the sudden drop off but but that's basically what we're looking at here and if you would like to be a train going through a tunnel help yourself get down on your knees and you can go right through that tunnel right there yeah and i'll even take your picture if you want me to but there you are so that's the piece of the locomotive one of them that exploded uh two people died one was uh had his limbs removed in the explosion of that piece of the locomotive. This piece exactly was just located about 200 feet from where we're standing, just off in the trees. And that's where it landed. And they brought it up here when they made this a tourist attraction. Uh, so we could kind of little hands on of what happens. That's really thick, strong metal. To get it to explode takes a lot of pressure. So these, they're very risky, very, very, very risky, these guys. But they worked really hard, right? They worked really hard to build the tunnels, so it's safer for us today. Where you're sitting, you can see that railway line over there. There's a little set of rapids, the water rippling. That's where the water is coming into the lake from the melting glacier across up there. That is, there it is right there on the right. Water coming in in one location, leaving in two. next little one looks like a sleeping buffalo that is tunnel mountain and the amazing thing about tunnel mountain is it looks like a sleeping buffalo from both sides of the mountain even when you're coming from the opposite direction it still looks like a sleeping buffalo so very interesting Another good look at Vermilion Lakes as we pass Mount Norquay on the left. Sulphur Mountain directly to our right with the trees all the way to the top. Sulphur Mountain, yeah. Beautiful Vermilion Lakes. So you came on mountain, lakes, and waterfalls tour. Did I show you any mountains? <laughs> Did I show you any lakes? <laughs> what about some waterfalls? Did you see any waterfalls today? Ah, oh. and I took you out and we did the switchback and I brought you back safely, which is my number one priority is to take you out and bring you back safely. Did I do that correctly? All right. Did you have a good day, folks? Excellent. I like to hear this. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for joining me on my journey today. I hope you enjoyed your tour and I wish you safe and happy travels as you continue your journeys. You're all going in different directions tomorrow. Some are getting on the train. Some are taking some time off. Some have other tours tomorrow, going to different towns. 
and checking out some local attractions. I certainly wish you all the best in whatever your plans are. And as you continue from Banff and Lake Louise onward, whether you continue across Canada, United States, or around the world, whatever your plans are before you go home, I wish you safe and happy travels. So thank you everyone for a wonderful day today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're going to begin our drop-offs here in Banff. First uh, location on Banff Avenue is the Caribou Lodge and Spa. Would those of you that were picked up at that location like off at that location or downtown? Caribou Lodge? Okay, first stop at Caribou Lodge and Spa. Okay, so we're just getting off the highway here. As soon as we turn on to the next road, we're going to go over a cattle guard. And this cattle guard is equipped with an electrical um, current pad. They're testing it to prevent animals from coming out onto the road. They're also trying it a uh, trial base on the railroad tracks also. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention because there's many ways we try and protect the animals here in the national park. So there's the sign for it right here, Electrified Animal Guard. And sometimes the animals get on the tracks and they can be hit by trains, unfortunately. So what we're doing is we're putting these electrified pads along the railroad tracks where they're most commonly seen. And then when the train approaches, it turns the electric pad on and if they're on the tracks it just makes them uh, uncomfortable and gets them to move off the tracks it doesn't hurt them and then once they're off the tracks and the train carries on by it shuts off the electrical current so they can get back on the tracks if they wish and continue walking or feeding whatever they happen to be doing while they're on the tracks so another way we're just trying to protect the wildlife now with the light electrical pad on the tracks and it seems to be working so far i've heard good reports and i think they're going to try it for another year or so and then hand in uh, the paperwork for parks canada and see if we should do it more all right so as you uh, approach your lo different locations for drop off. If you could just make sure you double check around each of your seats uh, for your personal items, anything you brought with you on the bus, uh, if you could take that with you off the bus, that will help us not have to try and track you down if we find something with your name on it, okay? If there's garbage at your seat, you're welcome to bring it forward and put it in the trash bin on your way off the bus. But if you'd like to leave it at your seat, you're welcome to do that so, because I don't clean the bus, someone else does. <laughs> so you can leave it right there, and we have a crew that will come on and clean things up if you don't want to, not a problem. Especially if you have something in the overhead compartment before getting off, just make sure you double check up there to make sure you have everything. Thank you once again.
Okay, preparing for our first stop at the Caribou Lodge and Spa. Thank you.